Colorado Mesa is going to have to wait a little longer for their first ball game here in Grand Prairie, Texas. Instead, we introduce you to the next pitcher for St. Thomas Aquinas. George Navado will come in for his first inning of work. Again, Quincy University on hand as well. They will square off against Colorado Mesa in our second half of today's doubleheader here on NCAA.com, completing the second half of this bracket in our Division II championship. Still eight teams in pursuit of the national title. That includes the Spartans and Tritons. But George Navidel, number 88, will take the mound as he will see the top third of the lineup, and that includes Jack Larson, who has driven in all three runs today for UC San Diego. All of them coming with two outs, including the two-run blast in the third. So the opening offering from the El Paso native. How far is El Paso from Grand Prairie? It's in a different time zone. Over in the westernmost corner. As Navidel again is your closer. The six foot one senior. Second team all conference in the East Coast Conference. And he's hoping to have as much success as Kyle Lucky has had as of late for UC San Diego in relief. Well, his ERA at 2.95, but he has a high walk total, 13 walks in 18 and a third innings. 1-1, one, one, fought into left field. It'll get down, looking for extra bases. Larson around first, some trouble in the corner. He'll be in, standing up, and there is your potential go-ahead run here in extra innings. This time it's Jack Larson looking for his teammates to bring him home. Well, certainly the Tritons are hoping for better luck here because in the ninth inning they had the leadoff man on and he went to second on a sack bunt and to third on a wild pitch. So with one out he was at third and they didn't score him, but this time Larson, great swing the other way. I just love this kid's swing. Whether he's pulling it over the wall in right or hitting the other way, he just has such a fluid swing. Second straight inning that UC San Diego has had a man in scoring position. But that was the bottom of the order with in the one, ninth. Yeah, with yeah. one out or fewer. Right now, nobody out. Here's Brandon Shirley. Was 0 for 3 until the single back in the eighth inning. Do you bun him over to third base here? Well, that comes down to imagine what Shirley's capable of. You're going to be content with one run if you can get it. I'd swing away here with Shirley. First baseman cheating in, Bobby Morse. Third baseman holding back towards the bag. No contact, and there's your runner 90 feet away. That is not a foul ball. That's a pass ball. Ruiz just didn't handle that. I mean, watch Ruiz and his positioning here. It was sinking on him, but he tried to catch it the wrong way. He didn't turn his mitt up. I mean, he should have caught that one. Another one of those. And Larson may be coming home in the final 90 feet. There was a lot of movement on that pitch. All of the infield is in now. Count progresses to 1-1. One to one. Again, UC San Diego is your visiting team, so even if they were to score, regardless of how many, St. Thomas Aquinas will have a chance to respond in the home half of the 10th. The Tritons would feel a lot more comfortable if they could put a run up here. Swings right through the 1-1 one -one offering now behind the count. It was all too familiar for St. Thomas Aquinas fans going back to 2014 when they lost in 10 innings to Colorado Mesa. And that team is here. I mean, they're in the building watching. And the opener, just like this, is the opener for them. They're seated out in left field right now. Got them chasing. And there is your first out. But again, Jack Larson with the double was able to advance to third on the pass ball. Huge strikeout, though. That's a strikeout situation. So is this with the infield continuing to play in. Yeah, the outfielders have to stay honest because a run does not end this ball game, and you don't want to let that become a crooked number. You might work around Derna a little bit here. Derna's 0 for 4 today. A couple of fly outs, a pop out, and a strikeout. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world if you walk him and you have a double play situation to try to get out of the inning, especially when you got a guy here who's hitting 371. 
and all four infielders are playing up just short of the green portion of the infield turf. And they might just put them on here. A 2-0 count, and you imagine that would be a topic of conversation right here potentially between Chris Ruiz and George Navidel, who's become the fourth pitcher today for St. Thomas Aquinas. Well, this is a strategy situation here. I mean, this is up to Coach Muscat if he wants to just put the hitter on. I mean, you could try to work around him, but now that you're behind 2-0, and oh, sometimes you just go ahead and put him on. Runner on third is Jack Larson, had the leadoff double here in the 10th, and it is going to become an intentional walk soon enough. Yeah, this is a good move here. You don't, whoa, you, he almost threw that away. But And that's why I like this as opposed to the major leagues where they just put the guy at first. You never know. It could be an adventure. But you should do this, I think, rather than try to work around him. You might make a mistake. So a double, a strikeout, and we anticipate a walk here. Right now a 3-0 count. Now put runners on the corners and bring up the cleanup hitter. Eliopoulos, who's one for four on the day. Eliopoulos with a strikeout, a foul out, reached on an air, also had a double. He has grounded into a team high six double plays this year. You'll be hearing from his parents. <laughs> well, you know that that's what the Spartans are thinking about. Still just one away. A sack fly would get the job done with Larson standing on third. We are in extra innings for the first time this week. It's our third game. The first of the week for both UC San Diego and St. Thomas Aquinas. The 1-0 is high. By the way, coming into the game, if I was thinking about the Eliopoulos family getting mad at me, it would probably be because I butchered their son's last name. No, I think you're seven for seven. <laughs> That's good. Batting a thousand. And runner on third is Larson. On first, it's Derna after the intentional walk. Eliopoulos, the cleanup hitter, the 2 0. This will get out foul. 2 and 1. And we know that regardless of how this game ends, we are going to be slightly delayed with the start of the second game. Win or lose, these two teams get tomorrow off from Memorial Day. We'll be back on Tuesday. The 2-1 from Navidel. It's high, 3-1. and one. It's the only problem with when you walk a hitter intentionally. Then you got a pitcher who's had troubles with walks. And it could be a problem for the next batter. In Navidel, the third reliever we have seen today for St. Thomas Aquinas. 3 1 to the right side. A chance to get out of the inning. Tag is applied. The throw to force a double play. And we go on to the next half inning, still tied at three apiece. And this time, it's UC San Diego again, stranding a runner on third. Air Hogs Stadium, and we are headed to the 11th inning, tied at three. We've been tied at three since the fifth inning. Certainly, UC San Diego coming up here, they've had their chances in, in the late innings, right? Well, you and I were guaranteed this week to see over 120 innings of baseball. We now know we're getting some additional... <laughs> Bonus inning squeezed in. Don't mind here with this matchup. J.D. Hearn leading it off. And he takes a ball, 1-0, facing Navidel. Hearn has singled his first time up, then fly to left, walked, and grounded into a force play. And you see San Diego, they left two on in the eighth, another runner left on in the ninth, another runner left on in the tenth. And it really looked like it was a foregone conclusion that they would take the lead in those innings, I mean, especially when you consider the ninth inning, they had the leadoff man on, and he made it to third with one out, didn't score. Leadoff double by Larson in the tenth, he didn't score. He was left at third base. 
The pitch to Hearn fouled back, and it's one and two. Yeah, the last two innings, they're stuck looking back at a guy who's just 90 feet away. They've stranded four runners in the last three innings alone, now seven for the ball game. Well, they had Larson at third and nobody out, but then Shirley right. struck out. The intentional walk, and then a double play. A little controversy on that. As Lucchese made that tag, and Eliopoulos grounded into that double play. 1-2 to Hearn in the dirt, 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> You wonder if maybe the Tritons might think about a suicide squeeze next time, right? Well, they're so adept at bunting. And they're also great at sack flies third in the nation, but it just hasn't happened for them. When they had multiple outs to work with to get it done. Hearn to be followed by Brigman and White. It's 5-6-7 and seven in the order. 2-2, two, two, fouled out of play on the right side. It remains 2-2. Two and two. And it's up to the relief pitchers. Navidel out there right now for the Spartans. Lucky doing a great job for UCSD. Hearn the senior trying to get on base here for the Tritons. Again, both these teams swept their way through the regionals. 2-2 two -two pitch, bounce foul. But UCSD back in their conference tournament they had to win three games in the loser's bracket just to get back to the championship final against Chico State. Uh, they would just as soon take the shortcut this week and stay on the winner's side. They would go on to lose the second game in that final to Chico State, come up short of the automatic bid. Trying to win their first game here in Grand Prairie. The 2-2 to Hearn. Line drive, right field hit on the nose, but right at Ding Kong. One up, one down for UC San Diego. You can't hit it harder, but it was right at Ding Kong. Well, we almost saw our third straight leadoff man reach on a base hit. Now Keenan Brigman, who is two for four, he's got a couple of singles. He was the man left standing at third in the ninth inning. 3-3 tie. Nine hits for UC San Diego. Only six hits all game long for St. Thomas Aquinas. The freshman Brigman takes inside 1-0. Third baseman Skralja playing about even with a bag just in case of a bunt. Outfield playing straight away. Shadows covering the home plate area. The pitcher in the sun. The pitch to Brigman. Inside corner called strike 1-1. One one. UC San Diego trying to advance. They can get the lead here and have their pitching go for them. And that's a called strike. One and two. And they've been there before as a school in 2010 when they were the runner up and lost in the title game to Southern Indiana. Made the uh, semifinals in 2009, but they've never won a national championship. Here's the one two to Brigman, low and away, and it's two and two. Yeah, we talked about how wide open the field was this week. Only one number one seed got out of its own regional from last weekend. That's Delta State. Of course, they're already facing elimination tomorrow in our first game on Memorial Day. Everybody else had to go on the road last weekend. Only two former national champions in the mix this week. Two two to Brigman, fouled. He went down to his knee. Well, we talk a lot about rankings and everything as far as baseball, but uh, how about the ranking for UC San Diego as far as just the university itself? They're ranked number 17th in the world. Number 17 in the world by the Center for World University Rankings. Sounds like a good place to go to school. Let me build a shed in San Diego, and I'll get it ranked pretty high just out of desirability factor. <laughs> just by weather. The 2-2 two -two to Brigman. Foul back, and it remains 2-2. Two and two. I always thought of that about Pepperdine. Like, it doesn't even matter what the academics are or the no. athletics. It's just the weather. They should be ranked as high as possible. And, and, you know, the view of the Pacific Ocean there in Malibu. Are you allergic to sand? <laughs> no. Come on over. <laughs> exactly. 2-2 two and two to Brigman with one out, the pitch. 
Hit in the air, right center field. Morgan with a long run going back on it, and he makes the grab. He may have had the sun in his eyes a little bit, too. Well, a couple of well-hit balls. And I believe Yogi Berra had a recommendation for individuals when you hit them. <laughs> well, in that case, the wind was taking it, too, I thought. Tim White will not be bunting this time around. Tim White, who came in and bunted for a sack bunt in the ninth inning, gets a swing away for the first time. No batting gloves on his hands. And he takes a called strike, 0 and 1, to Tim White. Five foot six, redshirt junior from Stratford, Connecticut. Structural engineering major. That means he can fix this stadium if it needs fixing. One and one. Or maybe it's too late. If you're a structural engineer, I would think that's before you build that, it. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> probably before the concrete is poured. It's been growing that beard for a while. Probably started it when this game started. Yeah, well, that's just during the uh, Ding Kong at bat alone. <laughs> yeah, that beard came in full during the Ding Kong at bat, which was 13 pitches. That was back in the eighth inning, remember then? Man. We are decades removed from that fantastic diving stab by J.D. Hearn that got things going defensively. That was a long time UC ago. For UC San Diego. So now White trying to get things going for the Tritons here in the 11th inning with two down and nobody on. Facing Navidel, who came in in the 10th. Swing and a miss, and the bat goes flying. Back behind home plate. One and two. Man, did he take a rip at that. Could win a bat toss contest right there. Well, and his teammate, Nick Kitzman, is on deck wearing the shin guards, as a lot of catchers will. <laughs> it <laughs> doesn't, it, I always <laughs> felt like that didn't show a lot of confidence in my ability at the plate if the catcher's... Going to go ahead and go 50-50 on me. Well, he's just protecting himself from the right. thrown back. That's, That's right. what it was. We didn't know that, but that was the case. 1-2 on the way to White. Just a little bit low, 2-2. Two and two. But when he gave White the bat, he also gave him a little something extra rub for grip on that bat. And White probably should have said, uh, hey, put those shin guards in the dugout. I'm getting on base. The 2-2, two -two, fouled straight back. So White staying alive. The second inning here for Navidel on the mound. Remember, he's your fourth pitcher we've seen for St. Thomas Aquinas. We have seen all the headliners in their bullpen. Moscatello started, went seven innings, two-thirds of an inning for Pinnell. Then Sinco went a third of an inning, and now Navidel. And White giving him a, a battle, the 2-2, just off the outside corner, 3-2. And, and this is another one of those at-bats where the hitter is just hanging in there. You get the sense if Navidel makes a mistake pitch here, he won't pay for it to the extent that he would against Giovanni Ding Kong. Looking for the 1-2-3 inning and his second strikeout if he can get it. But it's lifted into right center field. Ding Kong, the aforementioned Ding Kong, makes the play, and it is a 1-2-3 inning for Navidel. We head to the bottom of the 11th, and it'll be Skrelja, Ding Kong, and Morse coming up for St. Thomas Aquinas in the tie game. 